I've preached some messages that have really tried to focus in on that theme of, of real faith. Right now in our adult Bible class, we're studying a series of lessons about real church. And then uh, sometime beginning uh, in October, sometime, or at the end of October, we're going to begin a series of lessons in our adult Bible class about real Christianity. But uh, I believe this is something that God so much desires for us. He wants us to be real. He wants us to be genuine. He wants us to be authentic disciples of Jesus Christ. And one of the books of the Bible where we, we see this theme of realness uh, emphasized again is the books of Timothy, First and Second Timothy. And there's a powerful statement that gets given in Timothy where Paul is writing to this young man and he, and he talks about the unfeigned faith that was first in his mother and grandmother. And what a, what a blessing that is that that could be said. Where Paul said, you had a mother and you had a grandmother, grandmother that had an unfeigned faith. Meaning, it wasn't faked. It was not feigned. It, was not, it wasn't that they were wearing a mask. They were not pretending. They were real. They were authentic. They were genuine in following the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll see that some as we go through the book of Timothy. But we'll begin here in 1 Timothy chapter 1 this morning. And, and again, I'll just share with you some thoughts that the Lord laid on my heart as I studied these books in my personal devotions. And we'll see how far we get today and go through this some in the, in the coming weeks. Together. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to speak to your heart. Ask God to give me wisdom to say what I should say this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, work in our lives. We sure do need you. Thank you for loving us. Speak to us today. Teach us things from your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. First Timothy here in chapter number one. Paul the Apostle is writing to Timothy who was his, his son in the faith. He was his son in the faith. Now, whether it was somebody that he had personally led him to Christ or just somebody that he had really been able to train and mentor and teach and so on, but he regarded Timothy and referred to Timothy as his, his son in the faith. 1 Timothy chapter 1, and let's read there, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace and mercy and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible declares here Paul as being an apostle. And, you know, some people may wonder, who was the 12th apostle after Judas Iscariot, you know, betrayed the Lord? And the apostles tried to appoint somebody, but... I personally am of the opinion that the, 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 the Paul, the apostle, as he gets even referred to in the scriptures, was really the Lord's choice for being the 12th apostle. And, and the apostles were all ones who had seen Jesus. And you'd say, well, may, well Paul didn't necessarily get to do that. But, but yes, he did. If you remember the story of Saul on the, road, on the road to Damascus, right? 
And he did have this vision and did see the Lord. And so that could also qualify him as one of those who had seen Jesus uh, to be one of the apostles. And so here we have Paul the Apostle writing. And he writes to Timothy, the Bible says, my own son in the faith. And obviously a young man that he, he loved dearly, cared about, and was mentoring him and preparing him for ministry. And we have these two letters recorded in the scriptures that Paul writes to Timothy to teach him. And as we look here at verse number three, Paul tells Timothy that he's going to need to confront those that were teaching false doctrine. He was going to need to confront those that were teaching false doctrine. It says in verse three, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. And so obviously Paul was concerned about that there were some that were te trying to teach doctrine other than the apostles' doctrine, other than what was delivered to them uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul warns Timothy, Timothy, you're a young man still. You're a young man in ministry, but when you are, have some, some people that you're dealing with in churches that are trying to teach other doctrine or false doctrine, you're going to have to address it. You're going to have to deal with it. And, and listen, if, if a pastor ever comes to a church and says, I need to deal with some things where, where maybe uh, some people are being influenced by heresy, people are being influenced by false doctrine, whether it be from somebody that within the church tries to teach false doctrine, or whether there's just, you know, some YouTube uh, preacher or, or crazy nut on YouTube that is trying to teach things that are a little off, uh, he's to warn about that. You know, there's a lot of people that in recent years that have been influenced by a man who, um, I don't even want to mention his name because I don't want you to look into him, but I, I, I describe him this way. I think he's 50% zealot. Boy, he's zealous for the Lord, passionate about the Lord and souls. 50% zealot, 50% uh, heretic, because he believes and teaches a lot of crazy stuff. 50% zealot, 50% heretic, and 50% lunatic. He's also quite crazy. And, and so he's not even legally allowed in Canada right now because he's, he's been banned uh, from entering our country. And you say 50%, 50%, 50%. That, that, that's 150 percent pastor. I know, that's not a man, that's a monster. And uh, anyways, there's, there's crazy people out there at times. And you know what, if, if I knew that some of you today were being influenced by his doctrine, I'd have to name him and, and, and teach that things he's teaching is false and wrong and so on. But, but there may be times, again, where a pastor has to teach against false doctrine or has to teach against heresy. And Paul comes to young Timothy and says, you're, you're going to have to take a stand. You're going to have to uh, teach the doctrine of the apostles and the word of God. And you're going to have to confront those that are teaching false doctrine. Look at verse 4. Paul says to Timothy, neither give heed to fables. You know what fables are? You know, made up stories, right? Neither give heed to, to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. He says some people with their fables with their falsehoods, with their made-up stories. Some people with their just, you know, debating and being contentious and arguing over even genealogies. They're just going to minister more questions in people's minds, more doubts in people's mind. And he says, Timothy, you're going to have to deal with these things and make sure you're teaching people in such a way that you're teaching them truth that doesn't create more confusion or more questions but things that answers people's questions, things that teaches to them the truth, the word of God, so that they can know what they believe. He says, you don't want to uh, give heed to fables. You want to instead uh, be godly edifying, or rather uh, it says godly edifying, which is in faith. So do again. He was to teach them the things that would edify them. What does edify mean? It means to build up an edifice is a house or a structure, right? It's a building. Well, edifying in the scriptures means to build up. And, and Paul says to Timothy, you're going to need to teach people things that does, doesn't minister questions or doubts or confusion, but things that helps to build them up uh, in, in the faith. Build them up in the faith. Jude talks about that as well. Building people up in the most holy faith. And Jude verse 3, earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. 
Don't get sidetracked by fables. Don't get sidetracked by, 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 by some crazy teachers on YouTube. Don't get sidetracked by some who have some false doctrine or have turned away from what is uh, the word of God and what is pure. Paul warns Timothy there to not give heed to f fables, not give heed to fiction stories, those things which would just create more questions rather than godly edifying people in the faith. You know, Paul tells Timothy, you, you, one of your jobs as a minister of Jesus Christ is going to be to be edifying people in the faith. And so don't be like some that just get sidetracked and they do things where you're no longer edifying the people because you're just worried about these, this issue or this issue or this or that. You know what, sometimes, sometimes sadly people have gotten like that. You know, uh, where they've got so concerned about certain things or certain issues or maybe even into some false doctrines and heresies that they no longer ratifying people. They were just being contentious over things that really, really don't matter. Let's look here at verse number five. Verse number five. And it says, now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Which some, sorry, sorry, uh, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Paul tells Timothy here that the end goal, the end of the commandment, the, the end goal, if I could say it that way, the end goal of what he's telling him is to achieve love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a real faith. A real faith. If you could take home nothing else today, those are good things to take home. Paul says, this is, this is the, the end of the commandment. This is, this is my end goal, Timothy. This is my desire. This is what I want. I don't want you getting sidetracked. I don't want you being with those that are just with their, they're their confused with their fables and their stories and their and the genealogies and they just create more questions. I want you to be one who's concerned with the faith and building people up in the faith. But he says, my end goal for you, the end of the commandment is this, love from a pure heart. You and I, all of us, whether we're a preacher like Timothy, who was a young preacher, being mentored by Paul, or whether we're just, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm, a, I'm a following Jesus. All of us ought to desire that that would be true about us, that we would have love from a pure heart, charity out of a pure heart. Do you have a love for God that is pure and sincere, you know, without wrong motives? So many times I have to pray and say, God, would you, would you help my motives be, to be pure? I want my heart to be pure. I don't want to do some things in serving the Lord and it really not be love for the Lord at all because in some selfish motive, it's somehow for me, well, something I accomplished or something I did for the Lord. I, I want my heart to be pure. I want my love for the Lord to be pure. I want my motives for the Lord to be pure. It's a good thing for you to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, would you help me to have charity out of a pure heart. A love for the Lord, a charity, an affection, but also a love for other people that's out of a pure heart. And when I do the things that I do, it'll be love from a pure heart. It'll be charity out of a pure heart. What else should, should we desire to have there? A good conscience. A good conscience. You know, a good conscience means there's not things that we're, we're hiding a good conscience means we can go to bed at night and lay our head down on the pillow at night and sleep with a good conscience. Knowing that we've not maybe lived a, lived a two-faced life. We lived a feigned life. We lived a life that wasn't authentic, wasn't genuine. You know, we didn't pretend to be something. We didn't just act something out. We, we were real. Again, the unfeigned faith there it mentions as well in the same verse. But it all kind of goes together. A, a good conscience means, you know, we're, we're not going to have things that we're just regretting or things we're hiding. 
Do you know that God knows that we're imperfect as well? And He knows that we don't always do the right thing. You know, we're not perfect. He knows we're a sinful people, but, but he, he, he's, he's made a plan for that. Maybe keep your place there in Timothy and look, look over to the right a little bit to 1 John for a moment. 1 John chapter 1. And I'm glad that, you know, when we do blow it at times, and when we do mess up, and maybe there's times where we don't always do what we should, or we, we do sinful things, or we do have sinful thoughts, or we do, you know... For any impurity or any sin in our life, or anything that's more darkness in our life rather than light, like Jesus, God makes provision for that. He says, I'm willing to forgive you if you'll just get right with me. And look what he says over in 1 John 1 and verse number 5. 1 John 1 and verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You know what that describes? That describes a feigned life. That describes a life that's not authentic. That describes a life that's not genuine. Where a person says, we say, I have fellowship with the Lord. I'm walking in close fellowship with Jesus. I'm walking with Him. I know the Lord. I love the Lord. I'm living for the Lord. I'm, I'm right with Him. But we walk in darkness. He says we lie and do not the truth. That's the type of thing that Paul's warning Timothy about. Too. Don't, don't, don't have a feigned faith. Make sure you have a real faith. A genuine faith. An authentic faith. But again, go, go on there. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, notice this, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar. And His word is not in us. You know what helps your... your we, we at times could have a guilty conscience because of sin. And as born-again believers, the Spirit of God actually lives in you. So it's even more than just a, a good uh, a conscience. It's, it's the conviction the Spirit of God may bring at times for sins we've done. Impurities in our life. But we can make things right so that we do have a good conscience. We can make things right so that we are able to truly walk in the light and say, yes, I have the fellowship with the Lord. I'm enjoying the fellowship with the Lord that He wants for me. But it involves us just being willing to be honest with God every day and confess our sins. Ask His forgiveness. Make things right with the Lord. And you can restore a good conscience. You can have a faith that's, that's unfeigned. A faith that's real. A faith that's authentic. A faith that's genuine. That ought to be what we desire for our life. We, we don't want to be pretend. We don't want to just wear a mask. We're not to masquerade around. We're not to pretend that, pretend that we're following Jesus and we're really not. He wants us to live a life that is charity out of a pure heart. He wants us to live with a good conscience. He wants us to live with a faith that is unfeigned. A faith that's real. A faith that's authentic. A faith that's genuine. Notice back there. Go back to Timothy, if you would. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6 again. Where he says, From which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. And Paul tries to warn Timothy, Timothy here that there are some, sadly, that have swerved aside. You know what it means to swerve? You're driving the car and, and you just you know, swerve off the road. You lose control. You maybe were looking at your cell phone and texting when you shouldn't have been. And then you realize, and you swerve. Hey, you're going to end up in trouble when you're getting distracted. When, when you're getting uh, turned aside to some other things that, that Paul tells Timothy, that's just going to leave you to swerve. That's just going to leave you to turn aside from the faith. 
When you get involved in, in fables and, and, and things that are vain and things that have no profit or benefit in them. Paul warns here that there are some that have swerved, some that have turned aside from the way of truth. They've turned aside from what was pure. They've turned aside from good doctrine. Vain jangling there it mentions. And what is vain jangling? It really is random babbling. Random babbling. And Paul sort of describes it to Timothy in that it's people with lots to say, but not much of what they're saying is truth. People with lots to say, but not much of what they're saying is the truth. And Paul warns here repeatedly in these verses. Again, verse 3, charge Charge those that are teaching other doctrine. Charge those that are teaching false doctrine. You're going to have to confront them, Timothy, because they're wrong. And those people who are wrong in their thinking and speaking, they're going to lead others away from the truth as well. So you're going to have to confront them, deal with them. And he tells Timothy, don't give heed to their fables, to their, their made-up stuff. Don't give heed to all those things that just ministers questions. Make sure that you're truly edifying people with the Word of God. And he tells them, look out, be, beware, be careful, because there are some that have swerved, some have turned aside from the truth unto just their vain jangling, unto just their babbling about things that are not even true. And he says, don't be influenced by those ones. Don't turn aside like those ones. He says, I want you to have a real faith. There'll be so many with lots to say, but what they're saying is not true. And their faith is not real. Don't be turned aside with them. And then look, if you would, at verses 8 through 11. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verses 8 through 11. The Bible says, But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murders of fathers and murders of mothers, for manslayers. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And Paul emphasizes to Timothy, or Timothy here the importance of sound doctrine. The importance of sound doctrine. Doctrine. He says to Timothy, you've been entrusted by God to preach the word. You've been made a minister. You've been made a steward. The Bible says in another place of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're a minister. You're a steward of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, he reminds Timothy, listen, you've been entrusted with something. And you've been entrusted with this privilege and responsibility now. We're going to preach the word of God. And so make sure that you are not turned aside. Make sure that you don't swerve aside like others have done. You better stay in the word of God. You better stay with the apostles' doctrine. You better stay with that which is sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Don't be affected by anything that is contrary to sound doctrine. And Paul encourages Timothy in his calling uh, towards the ministry. Paul recognized that the Lord was, had entrusted to him and committed to him the responsibility to preach the gospel of God, the glorious gospel, the glorious uh, truth of God. And he must remain faithful to preaching sound doctrine. Paul recognized that it was the Lord enabling him or helping him. And Paul was thankful that the Lord determined that Paul was trustworthy enough to have this responsibility. Look what it says in verse 12. 1 Timothy 2, uh, 1 and verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Maybe we'll talk about it more next week, but Paul recognized that it was the Lord that was enabling him. His ability to be in the ministry, his ability to be a preacher now and to be a missionary and to be a church planner and all that Paul was doing, it wasn't because Paul was anybody special. In fact, he had been against God. He had been against the Lord, going his own way with his own self-righteousness, his own selfish self way of thinking. But Paul recognized that it was the Lord who enabled him and the Lord helped him. And Paul said, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that the Lord has chosen to take me and 
determined that I'll be faithful enough, I'll be trustworthy enough, that he can use me. That he can put me into the ministry. That he can entrust me with the great responsibility that it is to preach and to declare the gospel of God. It's a great responsibility. Pastors and preachers and missionaries and so on, they, they, they have that, that special calling and privilege. But you know what? All of us as well need to be ones that God could look at and say, I know they will faithfully share my word. All of us are to be ministers and servants and to share the mysteries of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're stewards. We've been entrusted. We've, we've been put in trust with the gospel, the Bible says. And you, all of us, should be ones that the Lord can trust to share it with others. I was... Um, thinking on Friday, and I've thought about it other times as well. I was thinking about my sons and their, their grass customers and their snow customers. My oldest sons have shoveled snow and cut grass. And I was thinking and praying and saying, Lord, if, if they don't share the gospel with them, who's going to? You know, my sons have worked hard and they have a good, good name and a good reputation in our neighborhood for those that they've worked for. And I thought, Lord, you know what? You've, you've given them an opportunity. If I was to go knock on their door as a stranger, a lot of them, they might not listen to me. But maybe they'd listen to my sons who have worked for them and worked hard. And Is there a place where God has put you is there people that are in your life that maybe you need to recognize that God is trying to give you an opportunity to share with them the truth of God, the gospel? He entrusts us with the gospel. And you and I need to be ones that, Lord, would you count me faithful? Would you help me to minister to them the gospel? Whether it's your employer, whether it's a co-worker, whether it's a neighbor, whether it's somebody who you continually cross paths with in your life. Let's make sure we all stay faithful to what is sound doctrine. Let's make sure we also are faithful to minister to others the truth of the gospel that they need to hear. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, would you just take some simple truth this morning out of what we see in your word and use it to help us in our life. Lord, give us a growing faith and help our faith to be real. Help us to be ones that have a pure heart, charity out of a pure heart. A love for people that's pure. Help us to have and be, and be able to live with a, a good conscience. Yeah, there's going to be times where we sin, but let's make it right. So that, Lord, we don't have to go on with a bad conscience. Things can always be made right with you, Lord. And help us to live with a good conscience. Lord, help us to live with a, with a real faith. Make us authentic, Lord, and genuine. May others see the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. May others around us be edified by our speech. May we not be ones who are just vain babblers who talk a lot about things, but maybe a lot of it's not really the truth. May we not be ones who swerve aside because we've been influenced by some fables or some stories or some heresy or whatever. May we be ones who our life and our belief and is grounded firmly, rooted firmly in the sound doctrine of the apostles and what Jesus Christ taught in the word of God. Help us to know what we believe based on the Bible. Make us strong, Father, in sound doctrine, strong in our faith, real in our faith. And uh, Lord, help us to be faithful witnesses to share the glorious gospel with others. Thank you, Lord, that you're willing to entrust any of us with the gospel in the Word of God, and help us to share it with others who need to know the Lord. 
I pray this in Jesus' name.